Hey, so I think you like the math and history, and we're gonna find the area under a curve, and this is part two, but this time, we're gonna solve similar problem as the last episode, but this time, we changed it by having a coefficient in front of the variable. So, our problem is, the integral of the limit of between 1 and 4, 3x squared as a function, and dx as a derivative. So, the figure that we're trying to find the area looks like this. So, what is the area of that irregular shape? Well, we already know that it's a shape that cannot be identified with a formula, like the formula for a square, the formula for a triangle. But, what we can do is we can solve this and get 100% accuracy to our answer. What we understand already is that the integral is limiting the shape between 1 and 4 on the x-axis. The 3x squared represents the parabola shown on the graph, and the dx represents to find the antiderivative, something we learned from the last episode. So let's use the knowledge from that last episode to understand what the area for this one is. So let's start with the 3x squared and find the antiderivative. From the last episode, we said that an antiderivative is the opposite of a derivative, because instead of going down by one power, you go up by a power. <laughs> So, the antiderivative is, you have a variable with an exponent denoted as a letter n. You have to bring that power up by 1, but then you have to divide by the number you use for exponent, plus 1. So, let's do it down here. We have 3x squared. We're going to put x squared as the letter n. Then we have to add that by 1. Divide that by 2 plus 1. The reason why we didn't add a 3 is because the 3 is going to be used to do something a bit later. We're going to move that 3 and put it right behind the integral right here. That's going to indicate that we're going to do something a bit later. So going back to x squared, 2 plus 1 in the exponent is 3. So we're going to have x3 on the top. Then we have 2 plus 1 on the bottom. And 2 plus 1, also 3, is 3. So we have x to the third power, divide that by 3. But there's a catch that we did. Do you remember we put that 3 right in front of the integral to remind us about something? Well, that 3 is going to use itself to cancel out x to the third power divided by 3. When you multiply 3 by x to the third power divided by 3, multiplying and dividing are basically the opposite of each other. So basically, they cancel out, and we have x to the third power divided by 1, or just x to the third power. So basically, they cancel each other out. Okay. I summon a monster in attack position. Let's battle. Luck, don't fail me now. My monster's gonna attack. Each other out. When you have a coefficient in a function for an integral problem, to find the area under a curve, you have to multiply it for what you get when you get to your antiderivative. If you have an even one, like you have the third power divided by 3, multiplied by 3, it's easier. But if you don't, then you'll actually have to do the math 
unless you multiply it long term. We have x to the third power, so we're going to put x to the third power here and make up two scenarios. There are two things we're going to look at. The integral now comes in play. We have 1 and 4. So we're going to put 1 right here and 4 right here. What we're going to do next is we have to get two fractions. So we have to add that first scenario in for x and have that second scenario in for x as well. If you put 1 in for x and 1 to the third power, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 to the third power, or just 1. We have 4 times 4 times 4, or 4 to the third power. We're going to get 4 to the third power right here. Then we have to subtract the two, because the integral is limiting the boundaries on what you can and cannot work. Like, it's limiting your workspace on the graph, just like the last video. So, if we want to find the area of that irregular shape, we have to find the difference between the x equals 4 point on the x-axis and the x equals 1 on the x-axis. So 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, wait, 4 times 4 times 4 is going to be 64. Subtract that by 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So 64 minus that by 1 is 63. Unit squared. We say unit squared because the shape that we're measuring is a 2D shape. And not only that, 63 units squared is the exact accuracy and the exact area for finding that irregular shape under the curve. I hope this video has helped you understand what would happen if you put a coefficient into an integral problem. If it's even, you cancel them out. If it's odd in terms you can't easily multiply, then you'll actually have to do the work out long term. Like and subscribe.